And now music on to a profile of the celebrated Spanish soprano, Montserrat Caballé.
was Elizabeth Greeting from Wagner's Tannhäuser. And it isn't perhaps the kind of music one instinctively thinks of in connection with Montserrat Caballet, because this Spanish singer is more closely identified increasingly and throughout the world with the art of bel canto, the singing of those roles, mainly at tea, and the heroines of Donizetti and Bellini and Rossini and Verdi, the art in which the beauty of tone, the beauty of the voice is dominant. And I think that in the 70s, Montserrat Caballier is likely for opera girls throughout the world to ascend the throne vacated by Maria Callas, who occupied it in the 50s and the 60s, the throne of the undisputed queen of bel canto singing. And she's going to be talking about that art and what she thinks of it and of her roles in her career this evening. Let's begin at the beginning, Madame Caballier. Your family was a musical family, I think. Yes, uh, I mean, it uh, was not uh, a special musical in that kind of uh, working in that, but uh, my father was a big fan of great singers, and my mother did it, and the whole impression they gave me, it was a Spanish singer. I began to think, and when you first began to think, that you might have a musical life in front of you. Oh, well, that was later. I was 14. <laughs> Uh, after eight years in conservatory, uh, I studied piano and music. And then the professor of, of uh, music says, I have a voice. And my Elton was very surprising. But Papa says, that's not new. Myself, I have a voice. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's uh, normal. And then I was just made a, a proof and I was accepted, and I have begun to study vocal. And I was made a career, uh, official career, in the conservatorium. I finished with 23 years. So I have uh, many years of music before I began to sing. Oh, yes. This, well, this was in the conservatory in Barcelona? Yes, always. I, I study only in Barcelona. Oh. And when did you first sing professionally? What was your first engagement and where was it? My first opera was La Serva Padrona of Pergolesi. And I remember, I do it with Maestro Novazzi. And I remember that uh, in the performance I was very afraid, you see. And all the time I can, I turn my back to the people. Well, I was thinking that covers me for all my shame and <laughs> everything. <laughs> and after the performance, I was thinking, oh, I have sung. Now it's good. Now will come the maestro and say, it's good, etc. And he came so mad to me, and he says, all the time we would beg. I see only your beg. I listen nothing to your voice. Well, what anyway was an experience, my <laughs> state. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that was my beginning. That was in Spain. And immediately I was to Italy for my uh, auditions. The first one was in Neapel. And I arrived very, very sure of myself, you know, very sure. I sang Sonambula and uh, In Quelle Trine Morbide of Manolo Esco. And Di Costanzo is a friend of mine today. He laughs always when he remembers. <laughs> uh, he listened to me and he says, well, you are a little nice voice. I know, thank you, have more voice to sing in your home. But anyway, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> well, for me, it was a shocking. Oh, yes. <laughs> then my second audition was in Rome for a very important agent in Italy. He listened to me and he says, my dear child, I think it's better you go again home and you marry, you see. I think you are a wonderful thing to be a good mother. <laughs> so can you imagine? I was so depressed after that two auditions. 
Then I was to Florence to make my last audition. What I was thinking, three is enough. But the three, I try again. <laughs> I try. And that was for Maestro Siciliani, that was today is the chief of La Rai in Italy. And Siciliani listened to me, and he liked the voice. And he engaged me to sing a Spanish opera, La Vida Breve. Okay. And I was very happy. And so that was my beginning. I was 24. And then for one year, I sang nothing. Well, it was not contracts. And then Siciliani sent me to uh, Basel in Switzerland. It uh, was a nice theater. I was learned very much in Basel. I think you first sang in England at Glyndebourne when you sang the Marshalline in Rosen Cavalier and the Countess in Figaro. Now, Glyndebourne, as you may know, has a reputation over the years for finding great singers at the beginning of their career. How did your Glyndebourne engagements come about? <laughs> well, it was a, a very pleasant experience. But in the moment when I came to Glyndebourne, was the, let's say, the beginning of the international career I have yeah. done. And I have really not uh, so much time to to the Marshalline, for example, was the first time I sang the Marshalline. Was it? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have not uh, too much time to prepare there. Mm -hmm. And I came to Blindborn with very, very bad uh, mining of myself. <laughs> anyway, I came and to the first rehearsal, I remember I'm sitting down there very afraid. I don't tell anybody. And Maestro Pritchard, John Pritchard was there. And after the second or the third bar I sang, he stopped it. And he says, I'd like to speak with you alone. Mm -hmm. So we go in one little place. And he says, you don't know the bar, <laughs> madame. <laughs> <laughs> and I says, no, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I have too much to learn that uh, I have came here and I don't know the bar. And that was on the 22 of April, and the premiere was 16 of Ma mm -hmm. uh, May. And uh, I say, uh, I'm sorry, so you have to replace you to take another thing. Oh, good. I say, no, 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 no. I learned. Mm -hmm. I learned that part. But this is impossible. How you can learn the marshalling? You know, that's a role. <laughs> that you say, well, you never understand what that for a role is, he says. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was... And that's normal. That's true. That's the truth. I know it's not. <laughs> but I was very, uh, I say, I have a contract. And I want to do, please, let me try for an, one week. And after one week, you decide it, if you accept me or not. And in between, you look for another singer. Oop. When I'm not prepared, the other singer uh, do that role. So that was. and. Uh, we rehearse, and I was rehearsing. I was not sleeping all that week, uh -huh. I promise to you. I, I was not sleeping. I was day and night, learning and learning and learning, <laughs> so that finally I closed my eyes. I only see knots. <laughs> it was terrible. And I have the recordings, I remember, in a little house. We have uh, taken it in Glenmore, and I play all the time, all the time, all the time, <laughs> you see, by eating everything. So after one week, we, re we rehearsed again. was not uh, Parker, not a memoir, no. But many things, yes. But everything was OK. So my uh, preacher says to me, uh, you see, I, ha I never have thinking you can do it. But today, I have to say, you do it. Then came the problems. With my size, you see, <laughs> and the, all the dresses. And marshalling is a, a nice role, but you need to be not so big, mm -hmm. it's better. <laughs> and to have a good deshabillé and everything. So for me, it was a little embarrassing, you know. <laughs> so I done the marshalling. And 
the the people of Glenmore was a little upset while they was not uh, a bit uh, a bit to it. Accustomed to. Uh, they had not the habitude that the singers come without you now the part. Oh, yes, quite. So. <laughs> and uh, he was a little mad with me. And I says, I am so sorry. I am so disappointed. And I try my best, everything what I can. But in the moment, it was for me impossible to learn more quickly. And and he, th uh, the people have think it that what I learned that part in 20 days was not good enough. And for me, it was very pleasant to read all the reviews after. So that was for me a happy ending. very happy ending. Yeah. Anyway, not anything was terrible in Glyndebourne. Why, uh, Maria Jo Figaro was very nice, and uh, we done with a great success when we do the performance. At the beginning of Act Three of Mozart's Marriage of Figaro, the Countess is lamenting the loss of her husband's affections and recalling the days when their love was mutual and complete.